Hi everyone, welcome back to workshop. Uh, well, wait a minute, that's not quite correct. I'm not in the workshop. I'm actually in my battery room, the place in the house where I keep my battery storage system. And today I'm going to make some modifications to it. And what you see in front of you is my Solus battery inverter. It's quite separate from my solar inverter. This particular inverter here is purely for the battery system. And at the moment it delivers all of its data directly to solacecloud.com. I don't have any direct access, local access, to the actual data in the inverter at all. Any modifications I want to make regarding uh, battery charge or discharge times, that sort of thing, I have to log on to solacecloud.com and make the modifications there. Now they do actually provide an API so you can actually do it from your own software, uh, which is what I actually do, more on that in a minute. But the problem with solacecloud.com is it's not the most reliable thing in the world and there's quite a large delay, 30 seconds or more, uh, before anything happens and it getting delivered to the actual data that you can read. And that, so I want to make a modification to the system that will give me direct access. So if I take off this bottom access panel here, there we go. You can see you've got the interface ports etc on the underside, the battery connections, uh, the mains AC input, output and the data side of things. And this black thing here is called the Wi-Fi stick or in this particular case it's got an RJ45 a LAN Ethernet connection as well. And this is the part I want to make the modification on. Now this stick interfaces to the bottom of the Solus inverter via a Modbus connection. So what it's effectively doing, this is a Modbus server and it basically allows a TCP connection to the inverter itself. And unfortunately it can only deliver data to one TCP channel. Therefore it's a Solus cloud connection basically that this unit, this stick here, will deliver data to. It can't dual mode, it can't deliver to the Solus Cloud and my local uh, network at the same time. And to make things a little bit tougher, I can't just get rid of this stick because it's actually tied to the Solus Cloud software, the SolusCloud.com software. The Solus Cloud knows the serial number of this unit and somehow or other, perhaps a bespoke protocol, I'm not sure, it manages to tie the stick to the Solus Cloud. So somehow I've got to retain this stick in any new setup that allows me to deliver the Solus Inverter data to my local network at the same time. And I think I've got a way around that. So let's go back to the workbench and I'll show you what I've got. So here is the stick from the inverter and as you can see on this top side we've got a four-way connector there which interfaces to the inverter. I've got a matching panel mount uh, connector here similar to the one on the inverter itself. Four pins, you've got the Modbus A and B connections and a 5 volt supply from the inverter to the stick. And on the other end you've got the actual RJ45 which gives that TCP connection. Now as I mentioned the problem with these sticks is it only allows one channel i.e. the Modbus data coming in through the bottom there is converted and delivered to a TCP connection on the bottom but one channel only and that means only one device can actually connect to it at any one time be that solacecloud.com or my direct access and that doesn't fit in with what I want to do. I want to deliver the Modbus data read and write to both the solacecloud.com and my direct access and the reason for that is the solacecloud.com as I mentioned earlier is dead slow and a little bit unreliable so when I make changes automatically via my software it doesn't always get to the cloud 
Now, as I mentioned earlier, SolusCloud.com do actually publish an API to give users direct access, read and write, to the actual data. But it's not direct to the inverter, it's to SolusCloud.com. So any changes I make via the API to say my battery charge times goes to solacecloud.com then solacecloud.com send those changes via the stick here to the actual inverter itself and it can sometimes be a little bit unreliable but more than that it's dead slow it can take 30 seconds or more before any changes take place and that's complicated my own software which I'll show you in a minute uh, you know things like retry and wait and wait and retry those sort of things to make sure my changes have stuck and I want to avoid all that with direct access to the actual Modbus registers within the inverter itself. So how am I going to do that? And here's what I've come up with. I've made up this junction box here with a couple of WaveShare devices, RS485 to Ethernet gateways and a couple of power supplies there. And the stick will actually be unplugged from the inverter and I'll plug into the top here. As you can see, you've got one of those green connectors. So you've effectively got a dual WaveShare Modbus TCP gateway that allows simultaneous local read-write access while maintaining the Solus Cloud's monitoring functionality. The system structured as a bridge where the first wave share device, the master server, is directly connected to the inverter via RS485 and operates as a Modbus RTU master. So as you can see, I've made up a connector here that will go to the actual inverter itself. So this device here is responsible for pulling data from the inverter and providing it over Modbus TCP to any clients on the local network. The second WaveShare device, the client slave, is connected to the Solus Cloud TCP stick via the connector at the top and functions as a Modbus TCP client. So instead of communicating with the real inverter, this second device retrieves data from the first wave share and presents it as if it were the inverter. And that ensures that the Solus Cloud remains operational without directly accessing the physical Modbus bus. And this entire setup effectively decouples Solus Cloud from the inverter by inserting an intermediary, the second wave share, that allows us a Modbus RTU slave emulator while pulling real time data from the first wave share. And the advantage of this architecture is that local control is fully independent, allowing my PC or home assistant or any other Modbus TCP client to communicate with the first wave share for reading and writing. And this ensures that no Modbus master conflicts occur on RS485 bus. And as you can see, it is actually running at the moment. I've just got it powered up. I don't have any Ethernet cables connected. I just thought I'd run it in the workshop for a few hours, make sure the power supplies are stable. Uh, I've got two power supplies. One power supply is set to 12 volts, and that's for powering these wave shear devices because they are 9 to 24 volts. And this other power supply is just a 5 volt power supply for powering the actual stick via the green connector there. And of course it's all mains powered. I've got a couple of fuses on the right hand side there. And I'll mount this to the wall in the battery room and just cable it up. So actually I'm going to wait to do that now. I'll go and cable it up. There's not much to see. So I'll do that then I'll come back and we'll take it from there. Okay, everything is connected. I've powered up and I'm back down in the workshop and I'm on solacecloud.com and as you can see, I'm getting live data at solacecloud.com. So let's take a look at Home Assistant here and here is solacecloud.com via the API pulling the data into Home Assistant 
and you can see battery inverter solus cloud and there's all the data and it is changing i am getting live data from solacloud.com via my new setup but is the direct access working well let me scroll down here and there is the inverter that's actually the part number of the inverter and as you can see entity not available and that's because I have actually disabled it for the time being uh, whilst I was making these mods so I just need to go ahead and enable that there so if I just go to settings uh, device and services show the disabled ones and this is it here I'll just enable that one there go back to the test and if we just scroll down here yes look at that there is the part number of the inverter and yep it's fully populated there and importantly over back to the solus cloud ones it's populated as well because previously when I tried this with the single access only it was one or the other and it looks like now I've got both another thing is you can see I've got two cards here this one here I've given them the same name for the time being this one here is read data read only data from the actual inverter itself you can see the phase voltage the the power blah 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 everything else down there and this one here these are all uh, right access you can see I can make modifications I can turn things on and off and importantly I can also change the charge times down here so it looks like it's working so what am I actually doing with home assistant well I've got a Windows app I've shown it on the channel before a Windows app that I wrote that runs on my web server and I'm looking to retire that app and move everything across to Home Assistant and I've actually created a number of tabs across the top here let's go on to the first one Home Energy and you can see here yep there's a few gauges I've already got the solar system migrated across you can see it's a cloudy day I'm only making 131 uh, watts from the solar panels at the moment I'm connecting to my smart meter uh, for the incoming power into the house you can see that uh, there's the import export they've got the battery capacity there and some nice graphs for the solar power generation and also the battery capacity there and that's more or less what I had on the actual uh, Windows app that I'd written as well the next tab is the workshop one and this is where I take control of the aircon in the workshop. As I've said before, I think I'm not running the aircon in any kind of inbuilt uh, automatic mode. I've actually taken total control of it with my own temperature sensor, as you can see here. Workshop temperature 23.61. And I've generated my own set points within Home Assistant that uh, the aircon will follow and I've got uh, TCP access directly to the aircon to turn it from one mode to the next mode and of course I can disable it totally if I want to when I'm leaving the workshop and I've got a number of other things here's my PF sense box uh, that I've got access to from Home Assistant just for monitoring purposes really I've got my uh, laser jet in the workshop my NAS unit in the workshop I can wake my PC, my dev PC in the workshop from anywhere in the house and a few other things like webcams and some living room stuff as well in the house. But the important one for today is the Solus Cloud. Really happy that I've got the battery inverter access to Solus Cloud working and of course the actual inverter direct access as well. And here is the Windows app running on my web server. Here is the aircon stuff that's disabled. I've got the smart meter that's disabled. The solar panels that's disabled. The Solus inverter for the battery system that's just been disabled this second. And of course I've got some uh, uh, smoke sensors and temperature sensors in my battery room that I'm monitoring I've migrated them across as well so I can shut down this app the only thing I've got to do yet is I've got to write some home assistant uh, code in order to integrate the battery charge timing uh, through the night at the 
to enable the cheap rate uh, electricity for charging the batteries in the winter. I don't really need it in the summer because the solar panels will charge the batteries, but in the winter I need to make use of that and that's where I want to charge the batteries between 2 and 5 a.m. and make use of that half price electricity. So I've still got that to do. Once that's done, this whole app becomes redundant. So thanks for watching and remember you can always comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. There's plenty more repair videos on my channel from the simple to the complex. Check them out and thanks for watching.